So today we have Sid Freitag and Dan Lavalle and Emmanuel Contreras from um, Do It Academic Technology on um, Critical Readers, CSCR. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. So if we're following last week's session on critical case scenarios with CSCR and doing the CR half. The, so looking at critical readers, they're made with the same tool, but using a different focus. We'll start out by thinking, like, what are some of the reasons why students read? So I've listed some. Who else can think, what are, out of the reasons why students get assigned to do some readings in their courses, what's the variety of reasons why they're reading? It's almost always because they're assigned. But other than that, what are they reading for? What are they looking for? The reason is to get, just get content. There's information that you want your students to have, and one way of getting them the information is to read it. So I think instructors want people to want their students to read, to start to think like whatever the field is, somebody mm -hmm. operating in their field. All right, so it's kind of like number three. Like, yeah, how, how does a historian think? How would a historian approach this kind of reading? What do they look for? How, how is that reading practice different than, say, reading a novel for fun? So just hypothetically. Um, so one reason, that's another reason, is to be developing the skills of reading the way you read disciplinary writing within your discipline. Um, there could be a practical reason of preparing for a class discussion. So read something out of class for getting what, hi, getting what you get out of it and then come to class as a follow-up and use what you got from the reading to then go deeper with some uh, class discussion, apply it to something else. Or uh, there's even related to three, not just learning to read like a, like a disciplinary expert, but what is, what is the latest thinking in your discipline? So reading the journals, not just reading for the sake of knowing how to read, but then getting new content, new findings out of reading. And we'll, as we go through talking about critical readers, we could be thinking about what, where critical readers might help with these different kind of reasons why students read. Model uh, structure of ways to start breaking this down out of all the reasons why students could be reading how do we even approach thinking about that? And there's one framework from some of the research and the t connections between te teaching and research that could help us think about this is thinking about what are some of the ways in which students are approaching inquiry about approaching questions. And this is kind of a hierarchy that at one level there's very structured inquiry that a teacher gives the student, here's the question to go explore here's the place to go explore it, here's the method by which you would go about exploring this. As you move up, the students are getting a little more autonomy that maybe the teacher is just providing some questions to get them started. Here are some things to think about. So this implies that the students have already learned a certain amount of content, a certain amount of ways of asking questions, working in the disciplinary way of think, reading and thinking, but students have a little more self-direction now. They've gotten some prompts from the instructor and now they're more on their own. And then there's a more open style where the students are at a level of thinking of their own questions and thinking of the ways to go answering their questions. So we'll come back to this. Uh, again, using this as a frame, when we look at a critical reader example and think about what is this doing? And this can be portrayed visually that structured inquiry is very fundamental, then you build on it as you get more competent in being able to do your own guidance uh, in questions. And as you move up the, up the continuum, the process gets more student-led, starting out from instructor-led. And this, the way the students are having the experience down here, it might be more getting the information. This might be more the reading for content and not as much of the exploration, but up there in the open, it's almost, uh, almost entirely the discovery, students learning new things, and less of the here's this content, I want you to go learn this content. So Sid, do you think that, in, in your experience with instructors, do they find that students, do they all start off with a structured inquiry, or do they only get to that when they're desperate because the students come with this with no knowledge at all, and they read like they would read a novel. My guess, um, I don't have data on this, but my guess and my, from what I've heard is that there's 
probably an assumption that students, if you're thinking about taking students through the process, you'd start out with them at the structured level if they're novices in your discipline. Because if, if they only know how to read novels, how do they then approach reading a research paper? Right. How, and how is that different than reading a novel? So if you are consciously guiding, taking students through this process, then you'd start at that level. But uh, thinking back to my college experience, I don't remember being taught how to read. I was never taught how to read. And I know that when faculty often say that their students don't know how to read. But and they, we think oftentimes, I think as instructors, that our, of course everybody knows how to read the way that I know how to read, because I know how to read this, so they should know how to read this. But that's because we went through that process of learning how to read. Right, and, and whether you explicitly went through that process or, or you just feel. figured it out on your own as a way to survive um, can really vary uh, but among people. But again, this is just a basic framework to be thinking of when we look at a critical reader and we think about what is the critical reader doing in this case? How is it, where, where, where do you assume the students are landing on this kind of continuum? And could the critical reader do more than it's doing? Have you seen any critical readers that do all three, that start off structured and then lighten up a little bit and eventually get to the point where students are able to ask their open-ended questions towards the end of it? I haven't uh, because I haven't seen very many examples of critical readers and uh, haven't had the chance to really study what's out there. And also because I think of some of the people using them that they use the critical reader for the structured and maybe some guided and then they have the open, the more open inquiry in, in class or outside of the critical reader. Great. Um, so that's my, my hunch uh, what's happening so far. All right, so this is where we, uh, we take a look at a critical reader and think about what is it doing in terms of that structured, guided, open kind of inquiry. Um, has everyone seen a critical reader or at least a case scenario built with CSCR? So this is the front page. What, this is uh, an example from a French and Italian Renaissance literature course. And so these are readings that, that they're in translation from French or Italian, but they're still pretty, the language might be arcane compared to what we're accustomed to today. So there is a certain d different levels of guidance that students might be directed to with this. And we'll just take a look at how this is, what, what's happening here, both what's happening technically and what we're guessing, interpreting is happening pedagogically and how it might fit into the student experience of inquiry. So this is an example. Um, gives an introduction to the text. You've got access to a uh, PDF of the text. So we're not having the full text in the CSCR. There's, but this uh, gives a, an experience of part of the text and also a scan of its 16th century English translation. So you've got some different resources there. But we'll focus on what's really happening within the critical reader tool. All right, so similar to what we saw in CSCR, the, it's making use of a double-sided double window. And on the left, we've got the text. And on the right, there are, right now all we're seeing is instructions. That, but I'll point out one, uh, one feature is that here, there's the uh, feature of being able to roll over. So there's some text, uh, a word that might not be commonly known to the student. And it gives them a glossary. Or this could have gone into a little more information of what that word meant, to its context. But we've got contextualized, uh, contextualized glossary. And where it really gets more interesting is when you start to hi uh, highlight the text. And as we see, there's a couple of different sections that are highlighted. You click on one, and here's uh, we've got instruction to listen to the professor's commentary. Studies discourse. It deals with an issue that was of the utmost importance for Renaissance humanists, the question of the excellence or superiority of man. How is man superior to other animals? If you look at the image here, you will see a diagram created by a theologian by the name of Charles de Beaufin. Right, so you can get the idea. And here's a question. So what's the, what's the inquiry? What's happening to me here as I'm being guided to read this? If we think about the structured, guided, open kinds of inquiry, where would you, where would you put this? Very structured. Okay. 
Yeah. Or, yeah, because the prompts are like complete the following exercises or the facilities. It's, so it's more than a guide. There's like a, well, maybe it is just guide. I mean, structured or guided? Yeah, it can be a fine line between structured and guided. But to me, this feels pretty structured, um, that they're, it's telling me what to, what to look at. But it, it could also be giving me some prompts about how to approach a text like this. But, but I'm being given the, the content of what to be thinking about. And here's a quiz, and I don't know the right answer. But if I make some interpretations and check my answer, so I get some feedback. I still need to work on this. So that implies that there is an answer that I should be coming up with to that question. So to me, that feels pretty structured, that I'm being guided through this text, which might be very unusual for me, um, being from the Renaissance, and being from a time and culture that's not my own. So I could see where the, having the structure could really be valuable to the student. And here we've got a similar, similar sort of thing without the quiz. It's just here is more, here's more context to give you some insight. So the instructor has made this interpretation and has chosen what it is to try to highlight to the student about that paragraph. And using the, capa the technical capabilities of CSCRs, the highlighting, the being able to have the rollover, being able to bring in media for the context of giving, designing this reading experience for the student. And the rest of it, um, as you continue, same sort of use of images. It's giving me this guided, it's, the instructor has designed an experience for me to go through the text using the media and interactivity capabilities of CSCR. And in terms of the guided, structured, and inquiry, open kinds of inquiry, I interpret this as being pretty structured. So this could be as simple as an annotated text, but it could also be the, where the annotations lead the student linearly or, or, or not through the text. Yes. Yes, the examples I've seen, it is a pretty much a linear reading, and then the instructor has decided what parts to highlight and what kind of resources to bring in. So in this case, it's pretty, it's pretty, guy, uh, pretty structured. But I could see using this and writing the media and the questions a little differently to just say, Instead of here, look at these images, you might say, go look at the images of Albrecht Dürer because he worked a lot with this theme and pay attention to such and such when you, when you look at uh, Dürer's woodcuts. So that might be a little more, little more, less structured, starting to move towards the guided. And I saw some arrows on the bottom there, were the little fingers pointing left and right. So is that back and forward? Yes, those are custom before and next buttons. All right, so you could put a very I'm thinking in, in the School of Education, a very academic article from a journal where I don't read things linearly through that. I will read the abstract and then I'll go to the conclusion and then with those two things in mind, I'll go back in and pick out the points in between. So you could also structure a very nonlinear text with this as well. I, I could see that yeah, you could do that. You could take advantage, use the branching capabilities to but you'd want to be storyboarding that out and really thinking about what it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I could see, I could see more use for it uh, than, than what you see in this one example. But this is a starting point.